Thank you, Clay. Welcome, everyone. Coming to you from the Cargill booth at the Commodity Classic, I'm Kara Hart with Brownfield Ag News. We're going to continue our chat about carbon and soil health today. And uh, joining me up here on the stage next to me is West Central Illinois farmer Colby Hunt. And on my far right, we've got Nathan Fries, a sustainability lead with Cargill. Thank you both for joining us. And to kick things off, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves and, and what you do. Um, and we'll start here with Colby. Colby, maybe tell us a little bit about you and your farm. Okay, I'm a corn and soybean farmer from West Central Illinois, about an hour west of Peoria. Um, my farm uh, with my family, my dad and myself, an uncle, two cousins, and then another cousin and his son. So there's quite a few of us in our operation. and. Um, we've been a no-till operation and involved with Corgill's Century program for a while, so that's why I'm here. What about you, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, so Nathan Priest. Oh, I'm sorry, Nathan. Thank that's, you. That's all right. Um, so I've been with Corgill a little over 11 years, and I really focus on our environmental outcome programs where we uh, help farmers connect to broader markets. And so uh, really looking forward to the discussion this morning. So, Nate, let's start by uh, talking a little bit more about the Cargill Regen Connect uh, regenerative ag practices here. How does uh, this program link regenerative ag practices and carbon together? Tell us more. Yeah, so when we think about regenerative ag, excuse me, uh, when we think about regenerative ag, we think about soil health practices like no-till and cover crop, and we think about the outcomes that are associated with that, whether it's reductions in, in greenhouse gas emissions or soil carbon removal, that where we store carbon in the soil, and we're able to connect to broader markets, right? So Cargill's avail ability to help farmers enroll in a simple, flexible, easy platform and allow them to connect to an emerging market is, is what we really focus on for Regen Ag, focusing on soil health practices that also allow them to participate in an emerging market. And Colby, you're part of the Regen Ag, uh, you, ha you have that on your farm, right? Yes, this is our second year being enrolled in the program. So tell us more about what it's like to work with Cargill in the program. Um, so we've had a pretty long relationship with Cargill as part of the reason that we got involved. We've been growing Century Corn for a number of years, which is their non-GMO program. Um, so we, we had a good working relationship with Cargill and uh, just, you know, the already having a good working relationship and a lot of aspects of their program works good for our farm. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to send it back over to Nathan here. Let's talk a little bit about the current state of demand for carbon. Uh, I think there are a lot of questions surrounding this, so maybe you can fill in the details for those that are joining us here at, at Classic or online as well. It's one of the most common asked questions, and, we'll, and, the, and the positive news about it is that we only see the market growing and the demand growing. Right now, Cardio focuses on our food and feed customers is really our target uh, audience and customer base where we can connect farmers to those to those uh, consumer bases. And about 30% right now of our food and feed customers have carbon reduction goals within our supply chain. And we anticipate that to only increase by 2025 and then on to 2030. And so we're excited to continue to grow the program. And this year we were able to expand it to 24 states uh, from the 15 from the previous year. And so the demand has been strong. We continue to have conversations up and down the supply chain and, and uh, connect farmers into that opportunity. So how is that market developing? It continues to, to come not only from uh, ESG commitments broadly right at, at, the, at the board level from some of these uh, downstream food companies, but of course consumers continue to focus on that and, and continue to, to uh, vote with their wallet around uh, what products they, they prefer. Uh, and, and we continue to hear from farmers being interested in the program. So as we continue to roll out different uh, options and opportunities for farmers, uh, continue to want to be in the program, ask a lot of questions, and it's been the ability to not only connect the farmer interest in the up and coming carbon market, mm -hmm. help them uh, understand what the opportunity is, but then answer that downstream demand uh, for carbon reductions all the way to the consumer. So we heard a little bit about from Colby about what it's like for him and the program at his farm. But I wondered, Nathan, if you could uh, tell us a little bit more about what it's like to work with some of the other growers uh, that are taking advantage of this program. It's been, it's been great. We've had great uh, grower response. And, and I think one of the things that we hear is, is where do we go from here, right? So uh, from the earlier interviews you've done with some of my colleagues and, and Colby, we know that like, carbon is where we started, right? Well, we started with no-till and, and cover crop additions uh, to farms. But I think 
we know that there's broader benefits than that. Uh, we know that environmental markets, outcome markets include water quality benefits, uh, renewable fuel is up and coming, and we also see some, some uh, traceability aspects in the cotton program that where consumers are interested in following that, that cotton all the way back to the farmer uh, and understanding that, that footprint and environmental impact. Uh, and so it's been a very positive way to represent agriculture. So Colby, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, that you have this at your farm, yeah. but how do you view the opportunity to participate in these carbon markets and the opportunity to, to kind of work with this whole yeah. thing? I think carbon markets can kind of be something that a farmer might be hesitant to look into. You know, like for us, we had been no-till and doing a lot of the practices for since the 80s. And so a lot of times with these carbon market programs, you can't sign up if you don't add something new to your operation and working with cargo was, they were able to help us find things to add and and make it work even though we were already pretty conservation minded with our practices. Yeah I'm so glad you brought that up. What are some of the new things that you've implemented? I know since your family's been doing this for such a long time yeah. eager to hear about the new stuff. Well I mean a lot of with our operation we no-till our soybeans and then strip crop in our um, corn so the no-till one year on our soybeans switching to strip till the next year on our corn gives us an opportunity to um, take advantage of different fields in different years to collect carbon and and then with cover we rotate our cover crops and that's another um, aspect of it are, are you looking at implementing something newer this year too or is that stuff that you've been doing in the last year or so no I think we're still kind of like in a perfecting what we're doing stage you know <laughs> yeah. that we'll always add you know maybe a different kind of cover crop or a um, one thing we've been changing a lot lately is just the way we seed our cover crops. We're having trouble finding the best way to seed it. So, you know, we're always working on different ways to perfect what we're already doing. I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but how do you guys seed your cover crops? How do you get that in the ground? Um, we've, a number of ways. Um, we've done aerial application into standing corn um, or soybeans either. And uh, we've hired a neighbor to help us seed it with a drill, following our combines to help us get it in sooner and get it up and growing. And, uh, right, right before I left on Wednesday, we had a guy that was trying to sell us on drone seating. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see what comes of that. Whoa, that is cool. Yeah, so, the drones have came a long ways. They're pretty neat. That is interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Probably a similar concept, yeah. but just something much smaller yes. doing it. And they can so. get a lot done with them these days. So. <laughs> it was, surprised me. What concerns, Colby, do you think that you had uh, or even assumptions that you had as a grower before getting involved in this uh, program with Cargill? Well, I think a lot of things that we heard early, not from Cargill, but from everybody in the industry was they were going to mine your data, they were going to do long-term contracts, um, there was going to be people on your farm doing inspections and stuff, and that, that's all things that make farmers nervous, and I think that as we've gone on that we've found that a lot of those things aren't true, and that us personally choosing Cargill was... they. They were very uh, forthcoming with how they were going to do things, and um, we like their approach. Is there anything that um, anything else farmers should know about working with a company like this if you if they're interested in getting into the carbon space? I think it's just like any aspect of farming. Every single farm's different. Every area is different. So you just need to look at everything, all aspects of carbon markets, and find what fits best for your their operation. So this question for both of you, you know, why do you think farmers should take the jump now and, and embrace this? I think it's a great time to learn more about carbon markets, learn, learn uh, more about programs like Cargill Regen Connect as, as we are able to really navigate this space together and allow farmers to learn more at the base level around how to interact uh, with the data platforms that are being presented, what, to your point, what the risk uh, and reward can be uh, around entering in a, a program. But I think it's a great time to jump in. And I think that today it's probably the, might be one of the easiest times to come into the carbon market. I think things may only be more complex uh, as, as more uh, different regulations and programs come into play. And so right now we have a, a great entry point uh, along with a, a nice incentive to, to adopt practices. Colby, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I'd just say that if you, the reason that we jumped in was there's already a financial incentive. So why not start taking advantage of that as soon as you can? And like you said, you get in early and you can, you can learn. Uh, I always say that we're still learning on cover crops. We've done more things wrong than we've done right, but we've learned over the years of doing it. So the earlier you can get started, the more you can 
know what you're doing with it as it ramps up, as the new markets emerge like you talked about and such. Nathan, let's talk a little bit more about how Cargill can help farmers um, come in here to win and, and achieve their goals and, and make this a successful venture for their farm. I think one of the big big things that we've been able to do is invest in a great team that you're seeing here today at Commodity Classic and you're being able to, to talk to the conservation agronomists that we've added to our team. So not only do we have a platform that we feel like is easy to use, but we know it's more than just collecting data and, and, and providing outcome estimates. It's, it's about the folks with the relationship at the farm gate. And so having sustainability specialists to really be able to answer questions, uh, conservation agronomists at a, at a technical support level that are unbiased uh, and really just interested in having uh, creating a, a, a great uh, market experience and program experience for the individual farmer. And I, and I think taking uh, you know, small steps into, a, into an emerging market is, is probably the right thing to do when you're well supported. Colby, what, what excites you about the future um, of all of this? Um, anything you want to add there? Um, I th yeah, I think my personal opinion, I could be wrong, is just the carbon is just the beginning of these programs that incentivize us as farmers to do more environmentally sound practices. So like, you know, if they look towards something with water or um, nutrient reduction strategies, you know, all of the key phrases that we hear in agriculture, um, and, you know, if we can get paid to do the right thing, that's, that's awesome. Nathan, anything you want to add? I, I would say it's a great time to connect through the whole supply chain. So if you're a Cargill Grain customer, Please check us out, visit CargillRegenConnect.com uh, or stop by the booth and talk to any one of our specialists. Colby, and I know we talked about this yesterday whenever we had the chance to sit down mm -hmm. and visit a little bit. When I visit with farmers and I do my interviews with them and we talk about a, a topic like this, they have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. um, what advice would you give farmers if they are considering um, something like this program? Just ask all the questions like, you, like we talked about. It's, You'll find what works best for your farm. I can't tell anybody. The farm next door to ours is different. So, you know, everybody just needs to ask the questions and find what works for them. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining yeah, us today. For us. Uh, really good to have you as part of this discussion. Is there any closing remarks you'd like to make as we wrap this up? Nathan, anything else to add? I think we covered it. We just invite awesome. everybody to check us out. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you at Commodity Classic if you're tuning in around the Cargill booth. And thank you all who have joined us online or maybe you're viewing this later on. Once again, I'm Kara Hart with Brownfield Ag News. Joining me on stage, we've got an Illinois farmer, Colby Hunt, and we've got Cargill sustainability lead, Nathan Freeze. And uh, be sure to stop on by the Cargill booth, come see us, and tune in. We've got two other videos with lots of detailed information about soil health, regenerative agriculture, and more. I'm Kara Hart for Brownfield from the Commodity Classic.